Hey everyone, welcome back to One Cent Sports Cards YouTube channel. We have the World Series in full swing right now, Dodgers versus Rays. And that brings me to a question. In just a few short days, the offseason will be here. So which cards should we be buying? Which cards should we be selling? Well, I'm going to do a few videos on this. And in my first video, I'm going to tell you three cards that I am selling this offseason. So here it is. It is my three cards that I am selling this offseason, and we're going to dig into the numbers, and I'll show you why. What are those three cards? Well, I've got three people. Some of them have been really popular lately. First is going to be Randy Arozarena. He has been on fire all postseason, may set records by the end of the World Series for most home runs, up there with legendary names like Barry Bonds, but I'm going to be selling, and I'll show you why in a minute. The next one is going to be Jake Cronenworth, very much the front runner for the National League Rookie of the Year. And finally, I have Uber Rookie, very popular in the hobby, Kyle Lewis. He should be winning the AL Rookie of the Year. But So why would I be selling both Rookie of the Years? Well, let's dig into it. First, we're going to start with Jake Cronenworth. The graph you see on screen, this is his 2015 Bowman Draft Chrome. This would be his Bowman First card. And we are going to look at his Refractor card, card number 197 from the 2015 Bowman Draft set. So as you can see, going all the way back to September 28, 2020, so it's been about three weeks, lots of activity on his card. We are looking at the ungraded one. Now, you'll see that his trend line is already going down. However, at this time of the year, it's not uncommon at the end of the season to see cards across the board in a sport start coming down in prices. Prices tend to rise at the beginning of the season. They tend to really kind of get higher and fluctuate based upon player performance during the middle of the season and as interest wanes or goes to other sports like football and whatnot it does come down at the end of the season a little bit however with jake cronenworth you can see back on september 28 2020 his cards were going for somewhere around 26 bucks and they've been a north of 30 dollars on a few occasions however right now his average selling price over the course of the last three weeks or so for the refractor card is around $17. It's just under that. It's $16.87. Now, to be fair, at the beginning of the season, this card would have been worth just a couple of dollars, if that. But he had a fantastic rookie season, so those prices have risen. So why am I choosing Jake, uh, Jake Cronenworth? Well, first of all, he is the front runner to be the National League Rookie of the Year. So if he wins that award, which it's possible that he doesn't, but he's the front runner, prices should go up in the short term, which provides a nice little window for a good selling opportunity. But the other thing to know about Jake Cronenworth, he is going to be 27 in January. So the chances for a long-term career that's successful, he could be very well, he could very well be successful for five, six, seven years, which would be a great career. However, in the card collecting hobby, you're looking for people that have the, the potential to find to one day become a Hall of Famer or a perennial all-star. All and I just don't see that in the cards for Jake Cronenworth, especially already being at the age of 27. Another point to take into consideration, if you take his 162 game average for the 2020 season, he actually only has 12 home runs, 60 RBIs, 9 stolen bases, and a 477 slugging percentage. Those are hardly numbers that suggest anything more than a solid player for a team, maybe even a utility player, which is exactly what he played this year. And I just don't see that as perennial all-star numbers. So what we're doing here is trying to take advantage of the fact that he may win rookie of the year, which will inflate those card prices for a few weeks. That's going to be your window for selling. 
And then the other thing to keep in mind, even if he does go on to be very good and successful next year, and those card prices kind of maybe come back after the Rookie of the Year hype wears off, don't forget that C.J. Abrams, who also plays shortstop, which is Jake's, Jake Cronensworth natural position, he's already the Padres' number two prospect. He was drafted back in 2019. He's the number one. Tw- uh, he's the number 21 prospect overall. And by the end of next season, and uh, it could be late next season or or at the very latest 2022, C.J. Abrams is going to be pushing for time in the major leagues. He's a much better, well-rounded prospect. In fact, if there's a card that I would look at buying right now, I would look at buying a C.J. Abrams card on the cheap for the money that you can make off a Jake's, Jake Cronenworth card the week or two weeks after he wins the Rookie of the Year. So who is my next selling target for 2020 offseason? Well, I'm going to turn my attention to the 2020 Topps Chrome Randy a Rosa Reina, number 49, Refractor Parallel. So this would be the Refractor card. You can see that this card there have this card has been so popular that I literally only go back a couple days in time. My the beginning of this chart starts on October 20th. It ends on the 22nd. And you'll see, just like a lot of other cards, there's been a lot of flooding in the market of a Rosa Reina cards. Um, recently, obviously, there's literally been thousands of them sold in the last 30 to 60 days. However, as you look at the trend line on the refractor card, it also has gone down, kind of was just north of $21. Now you can get it for around $17.50, the average selling price literally over the course of the last three or four days that we track this is going to be $21 and 40 cents. A Rosarena, a fantastic prospect from Cuba has an amazing story on how he got to the big leagues, um, has been sensational for the Rays throughout the playoffs and is on the center stage batting third for the Rays in the world series. So why would I choose a Rosarena to be someone that I am selling? Well, first of all, First and foremost, I do think that a 477 slugging percentage across three minor league seasons, and then all of a sudden he's got a 607 slugging percentage in the majors. I am a big believer that statistics, especially in baseball, equal out over time. So assuming that that slugging percentage comes down to a little bit more what he was doing in the minor leagues, um, I believe that the power will still be there, but I just don't see him being as productive of a hitter as he's been in the postseason. I feel like he's riding a little bit of a hot streak there. And as we look at kind of his numbers over the course of three minor league seasons, which I believe most of those seasons, I mean, he's got plenty of bats in the minor leagues. Um, that that 477 is probably more true to what he will do in the majors than the 607 in his very limited at bats that he's had in the majors. Next, Just like Jake Cronenworth, he is going to be 26 to start the 2021 season. So as just like Jake Cronenworth, he's still a little old to have a lot of long-term career success. Will he make a few all-star appearances? Probably, especially with all of the national exposure. So you might be talking about an all-star maybe two, three, four times. But again, if we're looking for someone for long-term investment, um, I don't see it because he's a little bit old um, with the slugging percentage and everything. I feel like he's going to be a good, solid player in the starting lineup regularly for the Rays, but I do not see him kind of passing through that line into something of superstar status that gets you to like a Juan Soto or a Ronald Acuna Jr. or Fernando Tatis, a Mike Trout, something like that. Um, the other thing is, although the Rays are probably going to be even better in 2021. Don't forget the Rays are still a small market team, uh, which limits superstar potential. So it's one thing with Ronald Acuna playing for the Braves, which is a very recognized national team. But when you play for the Rays, who have trouble drawing people to their stadium in the first place, is not in a hotbed for baseball, um, just not a lot of superstar potential there on a national stage. And don't forget... The second Wander gets called up, 
all of the attention will be put on Wander Franco. He's the number one prospect in the league. Wander should be up in 2021. He is going to take all of the national headlines, making a Rosarina kind of take a back seat, which will only hurt a Rosarina's um, card values in the long run. And finally, um, don't forget, if the Rays lose the World Series, no one remembers who lost. People only remember who won. So if the Dodgers win this thing, look, it's great that a Rosarena can hit all these home runs, but unless they go on to win this World Series, um, his name will be kind of an also-ran very quickly because everyone's going to be talking about the Dodgers, Mookie Betts, all of them. Um, so it's very dependent on if the Rays win the World Series, there these card values could maintain, especially if he pulls off some heroics. But even at that, I would still say go buy, go sell high um, during the hype. And then as those cards come down, um, sell high, buy yourself a Wander Franco because that is the guy that you want to be buying that is on the Tampa Bay Rays, especially being that he will get a call up sometime in 2021. So who is my final person that I am selling in the 2020 offseason, there's some people out there that might think that this is a travesty and a, 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 a Travis mockery. However, I am going to go with the 2020 Tops Series 1 Kyle Lewis rookie card, card number 64, and we're going to look at his gold parallel card. His base cards, there are plenty of them. They only go for two, three, four, five bucks, something like that right now. Um, they will probably go up a little bit if he wins Rookie of the Year, which I expect him to do. So I decided to choose a card that's a little less um, common. So we went with the Gold Parallel. It is numbered to 2020, so it is a numbered card, but a little bit of a high numbered card, uh, to, uh, 2020 cards of each of them. So I went ahead and took a look at all of those ones and took the last 30 sales on that so you, that takes you all the way back to August 25th 2020 where that card sold for about $80 um we are talking about an ungraded card here the average selling price between late August and now has been $66.74 and as you can tell by the chart it has been all over the board it has sold for as low as $40 it has sold for as high as $100 Kind of a very, I, I think that $66 price is very much kind of the average. Um, you, If you were on eBay, by the way, all these prices come from eBay. All of the research came from TerraSpeak, which is an eBay add-on, which you can get for much cheaper than Sports Cards Investor. It's If you have an eBay store, you actually get it for free and you can get all of this information and you can go check it for yourself. So don't pay $25 for something that you can get for at most expensive eight bucks or free if you have an eBay store. However, Getting back to the Kyle Lewis card, as we take a look at this chart, you can see it's all over the board, just like a lot of cards in baseball right now because we're at the end of the season. A small trend line down. If you go back to August, you know, you were sitting somewhere right above $70. Now you're somewhere just above $60. So it's come down about 10 bucks in value over the course of the last couple months. So why would I be saying someone that's probably going to win the AL Rookie of the Year? Um, why am I selling this card? Well, first of all, I feel like he's a sure lock to win the AL Rookie of the Year. So again, price should go up in the short term, creates a good sell high opportunity. Now, if you have the base card, it would apply there. If you've got a refractor card, if you've got some other colored parallel card of this, um, it, I feel like this is going to hold true across the board for Kyle Lewis. There's going to be a sell high opportunity after he wins the Rookie of the Year. There's going to be hype around that. So we got to go back and look at the stats. If you look at his minor league career averages, they are significantly below the major stats that he has. And the statistical average suggests that he is going to come back to the norm of what he did in the minor leagues. Almost every category that he has in the minor leagues, he is, he is outperforming that in the majors, which he still... Even though he played the most every game in 2020, you were still talking about a guy that's got around 80 games of major league experience. The statistical averages state that he should start coming back down to earth. And if you look at what he did in the last 15 to 20 games of the season, all of a sudden he did kind of start coming back down to earth a little bit. The other thing with Kyle Lewis that has always been the rub with him 
He had 71 strikeouts and 206 at bats in the 2020 season. That is a 34% strikeout ratio. So that means one out of three times he is striking out. Now I get that the game has changed, but that is way too high of a strikeout ratio to maintain a decent batting average as the book gets bigger on Kyle Lewis. Pitchers are going to figure him out more and more. And unless he make he makes adjustments, I believe that that average falls down even farther. Um, I still believe Kyle Lewis is an electric player. I still believe he is a great asset to the Seattle Mariners and plays a role. He's got decent power. Um, he's a very good defenseman, but people don't buy cards based on defense. Um, People will buy cards based on on-field performance, but those that's the the box score needs to be filled up, and it needs to not be filled up with a bunch of Ks. And I just think that if you're striking out at an average of 34 with not a big book on you, when these pitchers start getting a bigger book on you, it's going to be harder and harder to hit that ball, and that strikeout rate could actually go up. And if that goes up even to a 38 to 39 or 40 percent ratio, um, you are right near the men. Mendoza line real fast. Finally, playing in the Northwest, he's up there in Seattle, beautiful city, however, does not get a lot of national exposure. That's going to limit star potential unless he can be truly remarkable. A Ken Griffey Jr. was truly remarkable up in Seattle. Um, And if that regression happens, that national appeal that he got this year, that is going to fall way back in 2021. So he would have to keep playing and making those sensational plays. And I just don't see it from a team that still is going to be in a rebuilding process. They still did not figure a lot of things out. We're um, not one of the better teams in the American League, to put it lightly. Um, They've got a lot of work to do. They are going to try and build around Kyle Lewis. and And I don't know that that is a fantastic strategy. So those are my three cards that I am going to be selling at the beginning of the 2020 offseason. I got Kyle Lewis, Randy Orozarena, and Jake Cronenworth. So be on the lookout for my next video where I'm going to give you three cards that I'm going to be looking to buy in the 2020 offseason. And if you like this video, go ahead and Throw over to first, hit that like button for me. We do card investing videos from time to time. We do set reviews so you know about sets before you buy into breaks. So you're not buying into breaks you shouldn't do. We do live breaks. We do all sorts of different things on the channel. So be sure to subscribe, hit that bell so you know when my latest video has come out. And until the next time I release a video, I hope you guys are having fantastic luck on all of your personal pack pulls. I hope you guys are being good to your family, to your friends, to your neighbors. And until next time, take care.